Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to talk about the animation called stager effect or in other words consecutive animation of several elements connected in one timeline. In our previous videos we have already talked about how to create stager animation faster. To do this you just need to go to advanced, then click on GSAP animation library and then you need to enable child animations. Then you need to set a stager delay, let's say 0.03, and we'll add also a shift and 0 for opacity. And actually this is the fastest way to create stager animations. But now we are going to talk about more flexible tool. So we need first to create animation container and then we will select stager type here. Now, as you can see, there are much more available options here. So let's check how we can use this. So by default, our stager effect to child items is already enabled, meaning that the animation will work for what you add inside the block. And the flexibility here is that you can add absolutely any class of any element on our page. So let's say, for example, we want to animate our menu. So we need to check the class that is available on our elements. So we click on inspect here. And then we can check the class here. So this is block navigation item. So what we need to do now is just to copy it. And then we need to put it here. We need to add a point in front of the class itself, like this. And here there is a small hack that works in all these fields. So if you want the search by class to occur throughout the whole page, then we put point with the class. Or if you want the search to occur inside our element, then you need to add tag here. But since our menu is beyond our block, we just put point in the beginning. Then we just need to add shift and opacity. And now let's check how it works. So as we can see, it works. However, there is a small issue here. Our scripts are loading classly and our menu has a style before the loading of the scripts. So there is a kind of flash effect. And to avoid this, we need to make our elements when loading the page to be hidden. So we need to enter a code here in custom CSS. So we type here visibility hidden. And now, as we can see, everything works well. Apart from adding an animation to any element on the page, we can also use different triggers. So for example, we'll add a button. Then we need to add CSS grid of containers. And we will add some images. Now we will add a common class. So we go to advanced and we will add image animation in additional CSS class. And we will do this for all three images. Now we will use this class in our stager animation. Now we can not only make them appear when scrolling, but let's say on hover. And this is the effect that we get. We can also change the trigger type to on click or even on toggle click. This means that when you click on the button, the images will appear. And then if you click once again, the images will disappear. Moreover, in our last version, we have also added observer. 
This means that various touch and scroll events will be tracked or observed. This is very helpful because on mobile devices, on hover option doesn't work, so observer option will solve this issue. And for example, you can also choose an observe type, let's say scroll right, this one, and here by default element itself will be tracked. But you can also put a special word, which is window. And this means that our swipe and touch will be tracked on the website window. So let's update. And as we can see, when we scroll down, nothing happens. However, once we swipe, the animation is happening. Also, don't forget that if we add opacity here, we need to hide our elements. And we need to go to Responsive and Custom CSS in Advanced Options and to add our class. And we'll add here Visibility Hidden. So now, let's check. So now, if I swipe right, this is the effect that we get. This hack we need to use only in case if our animation is happening to objects that are outside our container. So when we animate the container itself, we do not need to use this code and everything will work automatically. As in other animations, in animation container, we can create chain animation. For example, here, when hovering the mouse, the animation is happening and we can do the opposite. We can make our elements to disappear. So I will add a class here, let's say hide me. And now I will create here a multiple animation. So I click here on add animation and I will set zero for opacity. Like this. And by default, our multiple animations work in a direction. So if I set here zero, the element will disappear instead of appear. I will add also here a custom object and this is how it works. So our element disappears in the end. Now if you want to make it disappear simultaneously with our animation, we need to add this symbol here. This means a start of our animation. We have talked more detailed about multiple animations in the first part of videos about animation addition. Let's now check the next effect called batch animation. It is very similar to stager, but it has one important difference. So we'll add the query loop here, and then we'll choose our pattern. If you have installed Query Edition in GreenShift plugin, then you will have here a variety of different patterns. So let's choose, for example, this one. And then we will change the post type to product. Like this. This is just for illustration purposes. So then we need to transform our block to animation container. And then we will set here a full width, or better white width, like this. Also, we'll set here a batch scroll, and then we'll add a shift and opacity. This 
This way the whole block is animated, but we do not need this. This happens because by default a batch to child items is enabled and the same as in stager, so we'll disable this, like this, and again we need to check the common class in inspect. So here is our class, we need to copy it and then we'll paste it here. So let's now check how it works on the website. So what's the difference between batch and stager animation? When you use stager animation, it happens in sequence from the trigger start. So once the animation starts, all the elements are going to be animated in sequence. No matter where the animation itself starts, at the beginning or at the end of the page, all the elements are going to be used as one animation simultaneously. And when you use batch scroll and not batch animation, for each element in an animation itself will be used its own trigger. It's easy to notice as we go back and forth. And as you can see, each element is animated separately. But at the same time, they are all connected in one chain. So if you need to animate elements that are scattered across the page or that are child to your block, then it's better to use stager. If you have multiple products connected in one chain, then it's much better to use batch scroll animation. We can also add other effects. For example, we can add shift or other parameters. And the last effect of animation in a sequence is a text effect. We have just checked it. So for example, we add here advanced heading, then we go to advanced and click on use GSAP animation library, and also we can enable multi-text animation. But again, most often we will use animation container because it is more flexible. And here for type, we'll select inner text like this. And we'll add shift as well. On break type for text, we'll select words. And here there is an interesting option, which is called text mask. So we enable it. And this is the effect that we get. And of course, we can also enable interpolation when scrolling. So we need to go to trigger options here. And we'll set plus equal to 500 pixels for trigger end. And one for interpolation. And let's add 0 pixels for start trigger. This means that once our block is appearing on the screen, it will disappear. Then once we start scrolling, this animation is happening. We will also enable hide on init and this is the effect that we get. Now we can additionally make our animation static on the screen. So there is such a block which is called pin scroll. We set white width and align text center. 
Here there is a trigger start set by default and we will make our pin scroll and our animation to match. This is not obligatory but it's better to do it in order to synchronize both elements. So we'll add the same trigger start. And let's now check how it works. So we start scrolling, the text is appearing and it's kind of stuck to the page while scrolling. And once the animation is ending, the scroll continues moving. We'll talk more detailed about pin scroll effect and sequence in our next video. See you everyone!